In life, I think that it's important to see all sides of an argument. This applies to coasters, politics, and even something as simple as arguing about the importance of hairbrushes? What? So for these reasons, I am beginning two series of why I hate and why it's the best. In this video, I am going to be talking about why Aerodynamics is the best roller coaster manufacturer. Aerodynamics is a roller coaster manufacturer that made their debut in 1959 with the Matterhorn bobsleds at Disneyland in Anaheim, California. This 80 foot tall coaster was the start of a massive roller coaster manufacturing company that was a leader in the industry for over four decades. Here in this video, I am going to be trying to prove how it is better than even modern coaster manufacturers like RMC, Intamin, or B&M. First, in terms of innovation, Aero is undoubtedly the best. Ever since their first ever roller coaster, the Aero team has been thinking about new and inventive ways to thrill riders. They have sold multiple of their four main models, including their Mine Train models, starting with Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Over Texas, which opened in 1966, the Looping Coaster model, starting with Corkscrew at Cedar Point, which opened in 1976, the Suspended Coaster model, starting with the Bat at Kings Island, which opened in 1981, and the Hyper Coaster model, starting with Magnum XL200, which opened in 1989. Additionally, the company developed other models within the category of looping coaster with their corkscrew and launch looping coaster models, and within their mine train category with the mini mine train model. On top of all of that, Aero has plenty of less well known models and one hit wonders like their Mad Mouse coasters and most recently their 4D coaster. All of these models were revolutionary for their time, many of them breaking height, speed, and inversion records, as well as being the first to do many things. Overall, Aero has broken what I counted to be 23 records, as well as had 19 world's firsts. Innovation is a huge part of being a great manufacturer, and it is one of the reasons why Aero is the best. Continuing with talking about coaster models, let's talk about variety. From my count, the manufacturer has a total of 12 coaster models and it doesn't even stop there. Aero has also manufactured over 50 car rides, over 45 log flumes and other boat rides, 10 train rides, and 10 carousels. Just talking about their coasters though, Aero doesn't only have a variety of thrill coaster models like their looping coaster model versus their hyper coaster model, but they also have coasters that appeal to kids like their mine train and mini mine train attractions, and families with their suspended coasters and mad mouse coaster models. This shows a huge variety not only within a thrill rides or family rides category, but also in the audiences that Aero coasters target, which, if you look at it, pretty much no other manufacturer has this much overall variety. This makes Aero leading in variety, which is an essential part of what makes a manufacturer great, or in Aero's case, the best. Now let's talk about something that Aero gets a lot of unnecessary hate for, the restraints. Aero actually has some of, if not the best restraints. On aero looping and suspended coasters, you can find a thin over-the-shoulder restraint. This restraint is small, not bulky, and is easy to avoid headbanging with, unlike many B&M or Vacoma over-the-shoulder restraints. These restraints also make little to no contact with your shoulders, unlike many Intamin or B&M vest restraints or those annoying Togo restraints. In terms of lap bars, Aero Hyper Coasters use a thin metal bar that clicks down onto your lap. This bar helps riders get a tremendous amount of airtime by providing some room between the rider and the restraint, as well as using padding to comfort riders if they happen to come in contact with the restraint throughout the airtime-packed ride experiences. 
Finally, the Mine Train models are designed with a lap bar that covers the whole row and is connected with the other restraints in the car. This means that if there is a rider that is any amount larger than you in any of the other rows in your car, then the restraint will most likely be several inches from your lap, providing you with a very open feeling while riding these kids' attractions. All of these restraints heavily rival modern restraints like vests, modern over-the-shoulder restraints, and even many modern lap bars. Many could even say that Arrow has some of the best restraints. Now I want to mention prices. One huge draw for parks when looking to buy a new roller coaster from different manufacturers is a reasonable price tag, and Arrow certainly delivered in that aspect. These coasters generally cost between $7 and $20 million when calculating for inflation. This, of course, depended on the type of roller coaster as well as the scale of it. Still though, something as huge as Vortex at Kings Island reportedly cost Kings Island $4 million to build back in 1987, which adjusts to about $9.3 million in today's money, which seems to beat out a lot of modern manufacturers in terms of bang for your buck. A great comparison would be Magnum XL200, a Aero Hypercoaster, versus Val Raven, a B&M Dive Coaster. First of all, many enthusiasts prefer Magnum over Val Raven, which is sad considering that the park forked over upwards of $25 million for Val Raven. On the contrary, Magnum cost the park $8 million to build back in 1989, or about $17 million in today's money. This is a $8 million difference, which is substantial for the park, especially if they plan on consistently adding new rides to their park. So, price is another reason why Aero is the best roller coaster manufacturer. And finally, the most important thing on any roller coaster is the ride experience itself. As I've mentioned before, Aero coasters give a variety of experiences, all of them being amazing. Look at their Mind Train models for starters. These rides always pack a punch, providing great rides to little kids. Plus, there are also family Mind Trains like Roadrunner Express at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, which is a ride that many people consider to be the best family coaster, combating newer family attractions like Gerslauer Spinners or Vacoma Family Suspended Coasters. Speaking of family suspended coasters, Aero suspended coasters are fan favorites at many parks. Rides like the Bat at Kings Island, Ninja at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Vortex at Canada's Wonderland, or the now defunct Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg are rides that many people adore and can even be claimed as some of the best coasters in their parks. Moving up to looping coasters, many of these provide amazing thrills and are favorites at parks around the world. For an example, look at Vortex at Kings Island, which had Kings Island fans flocking out to the park to ride it one last time before it closed on October 27th, 2019. Also, Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood is what many people consider one of the best in the park, and is a coaster that lots of people want to keep riding again and again. In terms of hyper coasters, Magnum XL200 is one of the most loved coasters in Ohio, providing riders with a crazy ejector airtime experience, especially in the magic seats. Plus, the big one, an aero hyper coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, is often said to be the best coaster at the park. At last, there is X2, formerly X, which is the Aero 4D coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This ride is often said to be the best coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and even in the state of California. This intense coaster is an amazing thrill ride that has some of the most crazy elements on any coaster. Ever since I was a little kid, I have always been fascinated by X2, and I had always wanted to ride it. And let's just say that the 3 hour wait for the coaster was completely worth it because when I finally did, it did not disappoint. Overall, Aero coasters have ride experiences that many people say are better than many modern thrill coasters made by top manufacturers. For example, 
I think X2 is the best at Magic Mountain. I think Tennessee Tornado is better than Superman Ultimate Flight. Okay, so this might sound crazy, but I like Viper at Magic Mountain better than Tatsu. Hold up, what did he just say? But I like Viper at Magic Mountain better than Tatsu. The fuck? Anyways, for all of these reasons, innovation, variety, restraints, price, and most importantly, ride experiences, I am here to say that Aerodynamics is the best roller coaster manufacturer ever. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. Obviously, I don't actually believe that Aero is the best roller coaster manufacturer, but I do believe that it is important to see why someone might think it is. I hope this video gave you some sort of a new perspective on aerodynamics, and I had a lot of fun thinking about all of these reasons why Aero could be the best. Anyways, look out for a new video titled Why I Hate RMC coming out in the next couple of weeks. And until then, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out. say that the three hour wait for the coaster was completely worth it because when I finally did, it did not disappoint. Okay, let me, let me just, just say that was kind of a complete lie. Um, X2 kind of did disappoint in a, in a couple, uh, in a couple ways. The fudge? How I get it? I said fudge. Not frick. Fudge. Because I don't curse. Oh shit, am I recording? <laughs>